Here in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I go about creating a high dynamic range or HDR composite image, as well as developing a panoramic image using Adobe Lightroom. Quite often online, I'm asked the question of how do I actually go about producing the HDR and panoramic images that I share online? More times than not, people are actually surprised that all of that is done in Lightroom. So today I'm going to show you a few examples of how I utilize that for my photos. So the first image that we're going to work on is a total of four images for our composition. Now, one great way to make sure that you have the perfect panorama when you're going through the stitching process and utilizing a particular program, it's to make sure that your composition has a lot of overlap from one frame to the next. So for the image that we're working on, I already have one of the images selected here. Now I am on a Windows PC, so I'm gonna hold down my Shift key and select the first image in our set that we're working on. And in doing so, it highlights everything in between that as well. So a little quick shortcut. So next I want to right click and we're going to go down to photo merge and then select panorama. And now once the program populates your stitch, you can choose the projection that you want, spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. So for this particular photo, I want to use cylindrical, but my favorite option to utilize is the fill edges. So watch what happens when I select fill edges. It basically fills in those edges. Lightroom does a very great job in filling in those areas. Now, say you didn't utilize that, and for this particular stitch that you have, you just crop the image of all of this white area out. Well, you can do the auto crop. What that does is going to make the image narrower because you're essentially cropping all of that blank space out. But for this particular photo, I don't want to do that. So we're going to undo our auto crop and just select fill edges. And then we'll go ahead with our merge. And so once it's finished, here's our panoramic image there. And then we can just continue on editing as normal. Now let's say you want to do an HDR image. How do you go about doing that? Now, of course, you have to do this manually in your camera. I typically do three exposures, one that's a negative two, one that's neutral, and then another that's a positive two. That usually gives me enough information that I need for when I'm doing my HDRs. Here are the three images that we have. Again, we're going to select one of our photos and just hit shift and then select the first photo in the set. Right click, go to photo merge, and then this time we're going to do HDR. So once the preview comes up, then you can go about with your settings. You can do auto align, which essentially, as it says, it aligns your images automatically. Now again, you can choose if you want to do auto settings or you can leave them off. It's solely up to you. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep the settings on auto. So the next thing that you have is your deghost amount. Now, what exactly is that? Ghosting happens when you have in your HDR composite, you're going from one frame to the next, but there's movement in that particular photo. So you're going to have all of that motion from each frame conflicting with one another. And so this tool actually helps eliminate that particular effect. It can be from moving cars, people moving in the photo. It could be even from the, the clouds moving in your image. So you can choose the amount that it needs to correct based on what that particular composition is. So once you have that selected, you simply just go to merge. Once you do that, it adds it to the task, just like it did our panoramic. Wait for it in the background. Once it's there, it will show right next to the set of images that you had in your set and you're good to go. You're ready to edit. Now, here's another example of using just the regular panoramic where I actually have quite a bit of frames here. I have, let's see, six, seven, eight different frames and all of these were, were handheld. Now, of course, you can still do panoramics handheld if your shutter speed is fast enough to do it. Just make sure you have enough overlap between the one frame to the next and to the next. So I'm gonna select the first lens that's in the set, hit my shift key, and then choose the last image. We're going to right click, photo merge, panorama, 
So once our image populates, we can go about selecting our settings once again. So again, I don't like the spherical, so we'll go back to our other option. And I want to do fill edges. I swear it's so good of how Lightroom actually goes about filling in that space. That's why I really, really love using that. So of course, you can either use your auto settings or not. We'll keep auto just for the sake of this video. And then we'll do our merge. We've done that. That's how the panoramic looks. I've actually already gone ahead and edited this particular composition. And there we go. And just look at how detailed our image is. So this is shot with the 42 megapixel camera and in utilizing the, the tighter lens, the 35 millimeter, we just capture even more detail here. So there's a lot more detail than had we shot this just with a ultra wide, like a 12 to 24 lens. So those are the ways of how I go about utilizing Lightroom to do my HDR images as well as my panoramics. So try this out for yourself with any of your HDR panoramic photos and I'd love to see your results. So share them with me on Instagram at Professor Hines. And be sure to check out my website at ProfessorHines.com for upcoming workshops, my additional tutorials, as well as my online store for my Adobe presets. So until next time, I'll see you all in the next video.